Welcome everyone to our um, uh, webinar series. Proud to have um, uh, some some good friends on here with us and and talking about our, our brand new Smarty Cam 3 today. We spend a lot of time talking about uh, uh, data analysis and and the the software side and and uh, configurations and and all very important stuff. And um, uh, but we do sometimes. But, but I. Uh, and we're going to continue it today. We're going to talk a little bit about the hardware. And this is something we've been working on for quite a bit. Obviously, the, uh, the, the, the global pandemic has slowed things up just a little bit here and there, but, um, but uh, glad to have it out and, uh, and uh, here in the country, here in North America. You can get them from your dealers now. And that is the Smarty Cam 3. And uh, we're going to talk about the sport version, which is the one that is, uh, is on your dealer's shelves now. And uh, we'd like to chat about it a little bit. So I thought, well, who, who should we have come in? And it's uh, um, uh, what we decided to do is uh, go right to the source, right? We're going to bring in uh, Fabrizio from, from AIM Italy. He's the, uh, the head of the hardware de development department at AIM Sportline. Uh, welcome, Fabrizio. Thank you for coming. Uh, hi, Roger. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, Fabrizio, I think this is his fourth time he's been here. He uh, came on here and talked a couple of times about PDMs and uh, was well received. And uh, another time with uh, when we uh, talked hardware in, in general. And um, uh, one of the kind of cool things I like about uh, not just uh, Fabrizio, but uh, you know, many folks that I work with at, at AIM Italy, they're out there in the field doing their work and then of course going back to the factory and and uh and putting all that they're not all their knowledge into these things i remember just uh fabrizio was it a week or so ago i you you, you watched one of our webinars from here in the states driving down the highway right yeah. so, <laughs> so he, he was he, he was here in the states doing some uh field work and some development and and ga gaining information out in the desert and um, um so fabrizio is a guy that's uh not only sitting there at the desk and and uh you know, uh, developing all of this cool hardware, but he uh, he gets out there just like the, a lot of other folks at AIM, and I really I really appreciate that. You can see by the pictures here that uh, I think this one down here is a PRI show at, at Indy, and then there's some IndyCar stuff here. The, uh, these bottom two where he's at IndyCar races, working with Smarty Cam. So appreciate you uh, being here, Fabrizio. Th taking the time, and uh, and uh, we're gonna have a good time here today. Anything you'd like to add to the folks before we uh, jump in? No, yeah, last, last, last trip in, in Vegas was very interesting for me because uh, going to the, to the customer and watch uh, with, my, with my eyes uh, the problem uh, is very, very interesting because uh, uh, staying, uh, sitting uh, in the office is not the same uh, that go to the, to the customer, speak with them and uh, understand uh, uh, what, uh, what the user want to do with, with our order and uh, with our system. So very, very helpful for me to, to go around and check uh, what, what's happening in the field, yeah. Absolutely, and it's, uh, if you're gonna come to the States, uh, Las Vegas is probably not the worst place to be either, right? Yeah, but we, uh, we trip around California because in three days uh, we move from uh, Vegas to Ontario uh, to another uh, city uh, that's uh, three hours from, uh, from San Diego. So we, we move a little uh, in that days, <laughs> but very, very funny. <laughs> exactly. I thought you were – the uh, you know, some of those little tiny towns out in the middle of the desert isn't quite exactly Las Vegas, right? So yeah. perfect. Uh, so let's let's jump in and let's talk a little bit about this. But if, uh, if those of you that are here uh, live – if you um, if you have any questions about some of the stuff that Fabrizio talks about, any questions about the Smarty Cam 3, we're able to watch the chat box a little bit, but uh, make sure you put those into the question and answer uh, dialog box. That will help a lot, and uh, it'll help us uh, sort those out and, uh, and, and again, get those questions answered uh, from, directly from the, the main man himself here. The... Um, <clears throat> the uh, but uh, I will be glancing at the at the chat box as well. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and jump in and talk a little bit about the the Smarty Cam Three. Uh, we're going to talk focus mainly on the sport today, but the, there's a whole family of hardware that's uh, that's coming right behind the the sport. Uh, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about the differences there. 
Yeah, so uh, in the last few years, we, we were focused on development of a new platform uh, because uh, it's very interesting to share among different devices uh, the same call. So uh, we check on the market uh, uh, which technology was, uh, was better for us. Uh, there are more or less two ways to proceed uh, on, on this device because uh, are very, very difficult to, to manage. Uh, the first one is to choose uh, an ASIC solution, but uh, in this case, uh, you need to have a very, very uh, big number uh, on the shoulder. Uh, we, we can speak, uh, for example, at a, a very, very famous section camera, but uh, that chip are available uh, only if you produce uh, some millions of devices <laughs> per year, and this is not our market. Uh, our market uh, uh, is a little bit different because we have uh, uh, many, many, many problems to, fo uh, to, to focus and to, to resolve. First of all, uh, we have to find uh, a, good, uh, uh, a good platform that gives us the possibility to develop uh, from, uh, in this case, uh, the, the little device that we call the sport to the high level device that we call dual, because uh, if we choose uh, an ASIC, probably we have to choose four different chip and four different development to have a different device. So what uh, we have done uh, in the last uh, few years is to uh, start uh, a new hardware development based on an FPGA. Uh, FPGA has uh, uh, more advantages uh, because uh, it's a completely uh, programmable and configurable device. Uh, uh, best performance uh, on uh, many, many aspects of the development, but uh, as also uh, some little problem to, to manage. Uh, first of all, uh, the power consumption. Um, FPGA uh, uh, granted us a big opportunity uh, to add uh, features in the, in the family. And uh, in, our, in our mind uh, is the, the right choice for, for our market. Uh, during the next slides, uh, I try to, uh, to, to understand, to, to, to explain you which is uh, the solution uh, we made uh, for, for this platform. Uh, by the way, a little presentation of the, the family. Uh, we have the Sport, that is the, the first camera available uh, on the shelf of our dealer in these days is the little uh, uh, li little baby of the family, but uh, is very, very powerful. Next step uh, will be uh, the, the actual compact uh, in, in the new platform that we call the Corsa. The GP, that is the actual GP with uh, one bullet connection, so a remote uh, sensor for uh, application. For example, we have uh, installed many cameras in, in Indy. And finally, the Dual. Dual is the most complex and most powerful device that we are going to, to release in the next month. Uh, as I said, all of these cameras shared the, the same platform. And the, the big advantages is, uh, for example, to share also a lot of firmware and software development. So uh, we took some time to have the first camera available. But in next uh, uh, month, uh, I hope uh, in, in a few months, we can uh, uh, make available also the, the other device. This is a, a big advantage uh, sharing uh, a platform. Perfect. Uh, we did have a question that kind of ties in uh, good enough to, to ask right here is um, Peter. Yonkers asks, why isn't there tethering on the sport? Uh, had the had the tethering uh, little connection on uh, uh, on Smarty Cams in, in the past, the the course, the style, or the the normal um, sp uh, Sporty Cam. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Smarty Cam uh, HD. Uh, is is that something you pulled off just because it's it's so much lighter and smaller? Uh, if we are speaking about the sport, uh, the connection uh, with the with the mounting guarder, if I understand good, is uh, the same on the on the the compact one, the the actual one we have uh, on the market. But uh, the uh, features of the camera are also in, in the little one are very very improved respect to the to the actual uh, compact. Naturally. Uh, growing uh, on either device uh, also the features will be improved 
we can take a look, for example, uh, at the resolution and uh, frame per seconds that grow up uh, from the, the little the sports to the dual. Yeah, what uh, what he was talking about, and maybe the, I'm using a word that doesn't work, but um, there was a little tab on one of the connectors on the back of the original SmartyCam HD that you could hook a little cable to, and uh, uh, in, in case the mount came off, the ca the camera wouldn't fly all over the cart, the car or the cart, right? Uh, it had a little cable you could connect to the as a secondary capture device, um, and the, and it doesn't look like the Sport has that uh, ability, is what he's mentioning. So. The sport is, is the little one, so we have only, uh, as, as you can see in, in the next uh, slides, uh, only the can connection uh, with the uh, AIM devices, so GPS, uh, uh, master, uh, and, and something else. On the other device, sure, we have also additional uh, uh, connection to the, to the vehicle and to yeah. other uh, systems. Okay, so it was planned out that way. The other thing that I've uh, I've had a couple of comments here is your voice is a little bit lower than mine. So if you could, uh, if there's any way you could uh, get your microphone a little closer or just speak louder. And if not, everybody, go ahead and turn up your volume a little bit. I will uh, I will attempt to not talk as loud so we balance it out. So perfect. The uh, let's uh, let's go to the next slide. And if you want to chat a little bit about the the differences between the original smarty cam 2 as you as you if you labeled it here but uh, and and the new the new smarty cam 3 sport yeah uh, in this slide we can see the difference between the uh, the sport and the compact the the right uh, comparison uh, has to be made with with the uh, with the corsa that is the equivalent to the compact but just to uh, to explain the user the improvement that we have also in in the little one for example the resolution we move from uh, a hd to a full hd so we have uh, a higher resolution uh, more details uh, more uh, features in the colors uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, sport is uh, very, very small. So we have uh, uh, developed a camera also for some market that we can't approach uh, with the compact one, for example, in the cart. The new camera has a smaller size and uh, uh, is very, very light uh, speaking in weight. Another big improvement is the uh, new door developed by our uh, mechanical. And we uh, substantially, uh, we make, uh, if, if I can show you, this kind of movement. And we have a very, very super fast lock and lock system that you don't need any screw, you don't need anything to open and close the camera. We have also improved many functionalities. Uh, for example, uh, the frame rate that, uh, could be higher in, in the other system. The data put in the camera, the camera today is more or less like a complete logger. All the data that can move on the can are recorded in the video files as a metadata. Uh, the camera, as I said, is designed also for an easy installation on the card. So light wave, small size, but uh, more more robust than the other uh, action camera that we find on the market. We have uh, a metallic front to dissipate the heat, but also to make the camera more robust. And we change also the, the glass. The glass now is made by a sapphire glass. So anti-scratch, uh, anti-bump, very, very robust. Let's see what I think we can go to the next one. Maybe you can uh, maybe go over some of the details. Uh, th this graphic is right off of the website if anybody wants to uh, get a little bit more information. Of course, we, we have this uh, document plus a whole bunch of other information, including the, uh, the Smarty Cam 3 user manual. So uh, if you, is there, maybe you can talk about a couple of things that are here that you didn't mention a minute ago. One of, two of the ones that I look at here that caught uh, caught me was the, the the waterproofness and the automatic track selection. I thought uh, uh, some of the updates on those parts were were fairly spectacular. Yeah, um, as you can see in the slide, a little brief uh, of the functionality. Uh, sure, we maintain a global shutter sensor because uh, in, in our idea, 
the improvement made by the global shutter is very, very important uh, in our market. Uh, this, uh, uh, to simplify the, the argument, uh, remove completely the wave effect uh, due to the vibration that we have typically uh, of the running shutter sensor. Uh, the resolution grows up uh, at uh, full HD 30 FPS. The system is completely waterproof. So all the installation uh, are guaranteed by the temperature, water, dust, and uh, also in a cart installation that for this situation is very, very uh, difficult to manage. We haven't any problem during our, our test. As I said, the frontal glass is made by uh, sapphire glass. Uh, the stronger glass uh, for facing uh, the high speed impact uh, with stone, with pebbles, insect, and also with, with other crusher that we can have uh, during a normal race. Uh, we had also a lot of graphic control. As we can say in Race Studio 3, uh, the new controls are uh, more flexible, more powerful, and well designed. We keep uh, as the previous one, the auto start stop recording, very useful for, uh, for our customer. And uh, uh, the new feature that uh, we are proud to, to present to you is the automatic track selection. If the camera is connected to a master and uh, if the camera recognizes that the selected track on the master is not present in the camera, the master itself uh, sends the information to the camera and the camera download from the master uh, all the point of the maps. So uh, camera slave and master, for example, a micro five or a solo two can manage the same track uh, without any problem. This is very, very, very fast and very uh, reliable for, uh, for the installation. Also, the data uh, had a big uh, improvement. Uh, in the previous one, uh, data was uh, more or less fixed in, uh, in selection and uh, was uh, recorded at uh, six hertz. No way to do more because the processor was completely cool. With the new platform, uh, we can save uh, all the data that come from, uh, from the canvas uh, at the frequency that the camera receives. So if we have, uh, for example, a 100 Hertz can pass uh, data flowing from the master to the camera or 25 Hertz GPS, we can manage all the data and all the data are automatically recorded in the stream file. So we have uh, a big improvement in the data management. Uh, also in the analysis of Ray Studio, we can download all the data as uh, we, we, we can do with, with the traditional logger, uh, for example, an Evo 5 or a TFT 5, 6, or 7 inches. Uh, a new big improvement in the analysis and uh, in Ray Studio 3 is also the automatic data and video synchronization. In case, uh, uh, for example, the MPA4, that is the new uh, uh, the new format we choose for, for the video uh, is not enough for your analysis. You can import the video file directly in uh, Ray Studio 3, and you can see all the graphs, all the data uh, downloaded by the camera itself. This is a big improvement. Uh, we, we are very, very happy to, to do that work, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, all, all our customer can use it uh, in a new way. We, we, they, they can see the camera as a, a big new logger with the video data inside. Just a couple of weeks ago, I, we did a, a full webinar here where, uh, and, and maybe Robbie can link it into the chat box. And of course, it'll be linked uh, for those of you watching this later on YouTube uh, in the description below. Uh, a, a full webinar where we, where we discuss that very topic where you have, uh, uh, there may be some, some, some options or some, um, some things that uh, force you to only be able to grab the video real quickly. You know, maybe you're in a hurry, um, uh, whatever. You grab the video file with the SD card on, on a, on a my, my webinar was all about uh, the current uh, Smarty, Cam Smarty Cam 2. Put that card in there and drag it into Ray Studio 3 and you have all that data and then bringing in the data behind it and it populated it with the, the higher um, um, 
sampling rates. Uh, this one takes that to a whole nother level, but the, the process is going to be virtually the same. You're just dragging and drop the yeah. you know, video file onto into Ray Studio 3 and you get uh, um, work it, workable data, you know, not, not limited to that six uh, hertz uh, sampling f file size. And the uh, being able to, to work with that is uh, very, very powerful. I'm very, very happy that you did that. Another thing that I see here, and you've mentioned it a couple times on this page, uh, and I know you have one more topic here to do, but uh the smarty cams before were uh, mov files and uh, and and we've switched to mp4s uh can you put give us a little bit of an idea of uh, what's more valuable about the mp4 and why did we why did we make that switch yeah uh, mp4 is uh, uh the most used format uh, in the world with the previous camera we can't manage uh, the, that format uh, due uh, to the audio we don't have inside uh, the hardware the possibility to compress uh, the audio and uh, to uh, make a, syn a synchronization, good synchronization for uh, audio, video, and, uh, and data. Uh, with this new platform, we can manage without any problem also the uh, M MP4 uh, format. And this is very useful for us because every player in the world can manage uh, video and data. Uh, the stream are compressed with, with the new format. And uh, for sure, th this is the right choice we, we have done, yeah. So we went went from the MOV file, which was you know widely received, and obviously we could do a lot of different things, but to uh, to even more of an industry standard with the MP4. It sounds like yeah, perfect. And you had one more thing there that, uh, that one more topic there: automatic data and video synchronization. You want to mention anything about that in particular? Well, nothing in particular. I think that you, uh, if the user try to import uh, uh, the the new MP4 format in the in the Raspberry, uh, we'll be very happy. To, to understand how simple it is to move on the video and the data all synchronized. Uh, you can compare two different uh, uh, turn uh, to check uh, the video position, uh, the data uh, recorded by the camera, and it's very, very useful. Also to, to move uh, inside, the, uh, for example, an error of, of the pilot during a corner or, or something else. So it's very, very useful. Perfect. Okay, let's go to the uh, let's go to the next slide and let's talk a little bit about the the um, the resolution and and the quality and and some other things. I know you've got an image here that kind of gives us a demonstration of of the difference between the uh, older cameras and the and the and the new Smarty Cam Three. Uh, okay, resolution is a. Uh... <laughs> uh, a hot argument because uh, some, some of us know that on the market uh, uh, action camera move from uh, full HD to 4K to 8K. Uh, in our opinion, uh, for our market and for our application, uh, resolution is important, but it's not the biggest improvement in the camera. Sure, moving from an HD to full HD give us uh, more details and give us the possibility to check uh, in uh, in detail some difference. Uh, we have uh, uh, the possibility to to focus on some event uh, happening during during the race or during the, the recording. That with the lower resolution uh, we pay, we can uh, uh, check uh, in that way. Uh, if we, uh, when we started the development, we, we speak a lot about the, the resolution, we speak about the 4K, the 8K, but uh, make some uh, um, speaking with, with somebody that uses the camera for the motorsport. Uh, also, the, the size of the, the file is very, very important. And uh, in our opinion, moving from a full HD to a 4K, 8K, uh, given as uh, then they give us a, a big improvement uh, in, in the quality of the, the video, but give us uh, a bigger file that in many situations could be difficult to move, to be difficult to, to manage and uh, to share uh, between users. So what we have done is to choose a very high quality sensor, global shutter sensor, absolutely global shutter. This uh, gives us the possibility to have more details than the previous one and sure a better quality. Also, the color and uh, improvement of the contrast and uh, the luminosity was very, very great with new sensor. Yeah, that whole balance a point of, of we're using a motorsports camera, right? And, and what are you trying to do with that? And that balance of uh, 8K versus versus uh, you know, um, uh, 1080 uh, full HD, 
the the file sizes grow grow so so fast that what what are we really after yeah. for what we're in in our environment right so the uh, there there's a balance and everybody says well not everybody but the, you, you hear it occasionally you know um, uh, we should have just went to this resolution or something like that but there's a there there's a trade off to that there's a downside to that and, uh, and and you guys have thought that through and 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 came up with a very very good balance it seems like to me yeah you're right perfect the um you mentioned a minute ago the rolling the global rolling shutter and um and this is another point when i chat with people about uh, about cameras and different things and it's hard to explain uh, and you've brought a, a picture here that gives a pretty good idea of what that global shutter does versus a rolling shutter and maybe you can explain this a little bit i'll try to point with the camera to some of the stuff that uh, you're going to chat about so people can see what that difference is between your typical action action camera and uh, and the smarty cam yeah, uh, what you can uh, see looking at this picture is uh, uh, the wave app, the so-called wave app. And if you look at the line on the right, you have the global shutter uh, record. You can see a straight line. On the left, uh, you can see a rolling shutter recording where the line is not a straight line, but as the effect like the, the wave uh, in the ocean. Why this happen? Because the rolling shutter has the, uh, the bigger advantage to as uh, smaller and cheaper, but uh, for the technology that the rolling shutter use, every pixel is acquired sequentially one by the other. So you have a certain amount of time between the first pixel acquired and the last one. In the global shutter, the situation is completely Little different. Uh, it's like uh, uh, an old camera. When you decide to get the picture, all pixels uh, in, in the picture are acquired in, in the same time. So in a, a couple of milliseconds, we have all the pixels captured and stored in, a, in, a, in the memory. This is very useful uh, in our mind. Uh, typically, in the situation we move uh, in the motorsport, we have a lot of vibration a uh, big uh, movement uh, and uh, many details uh, that are very important for the user. For example, if you think uh, at uh, the halo in uh, Formula Indy or in Formula One, if you uh, get uh, the, the halo situation with the rolling shutter, you can see that the halo seems to be uh, like, uh, like a glue, very, very, uh, I, 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 I can say, is like a, a wave if the halo was moving itself, but it's not true. It's only the effort of the rolling shutter. With the global shutter, you take one shot and all pixel in the same time keep the same position, the image and the same dimension. So if you have two analysis, for example, during a crash, the movement of some parts, with the rolling shutter, you are not able uh, to check what's happening in the, in the real because the image is uh, has a, a big distortion itself. If you do the same with the global shutter, you can see uh, during uh, frame by frame what's happening in the mechanical part. So uh, native global shutter uh, is the best choice we can put in an action camera for the motorsport. Sure, is not the, the cheaper solution because the rolling shutter are uh, more cheaper, but uh, for what the camera has to do, in our opinion, is the best choice. And you talked about uh, you, you gave a you gave one example where you know there, there's some sort of an accident. You're trying to zoom in and see that you know, so you're looking at it in the micro level, uh, but. And and that's true. And and uh, sadly, we have to look at video like that occasionally, right? But the uh, but it's uh, it's just as noticeable and even more frustrating to my eye to see this uh, in a video when you're watching it and you see the whole you know the, the whole oh, sure. uh, video is 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 just squiggly back and forth and it's uh, um, we just don't get that out of any of our smarty cam stuff. So it's uh, it, it, it's a as you mentioned, it's very expensive to do relative to the rolling shutter, but it's um, but it's a huge uh, additional uh, benefit to having the smarty cam. Yeah, yeah, it's an improvement in the quality major in the quality stability for sure. Yeah, perfect, perfect. With the new smarty cam and inside of Race Studio Three, if you've uh, updated your uh, Race Studio Three to the latest version, you'll notice that the the smarty cam Three Sport is in there for, as a configuration, and you can grab that. And there is a a, a whole new set of uh, 
uh, widgets and sets of graphics. And um, uh, you can chat a little bit about uh, some of the different things that they're doing on those. Yeah, uh, our uh, graphics and uh, software guys uh, do a, a, a big work on that. We redesign completely all the graphics uh, widget. Uh, we make also, a, as we call the sets of uh, different widget to manage a certain kind of style during one set to, to the other. Uh, if you put uh, this new widget uh, on the camera, you can see that the effect uh, is uh, completely uh, improved with respect to the previous one. We have uh, more resolution, more details, uh, alpha blending, the needles are very, very smooth in the movement, the number are clear, and you can adjust, uh, for example, uh, if you take uh, the RPM uh, widget, uh, the color of the, the font, the type of the font. So you can, uh, once, once you use the set, uh, changing color or changing feature uh, of them. Uh, sure, uh, in the next month, uh, we continue to improve uh, and develop a new, new widget, uh, maybe uh, coming from a customer request uh, or only for, uh, for our uh, decision. Um, the management in hardware of this uh, is very, very simple, and uh, we have uh, a big possibility to improve uh, the number, the quality, the shape, uh, uh, and also the kind of movement of the FTEC uh, for, for, every, for every widget. Uh, the management is completely redesigned with respect to the, to the previous version. And I think that in the next month, uh, we can see a, a, a lot of new widgets uh, because uh, some customers are already asking us uh, some different uh, uh, way to show the, the same information because more or less the information that we have to manage is the same, but uh, with the possibility to, to do it better, uh, clearly uh, the user wants uh, to improve also the, uh, the the graphical part of the, the widget itself. I, um, I've had a chance to play with them a little bit as well, and a couple of folks in the chat are, are chatting about them the, that have cameras. They, the, uh, the, the clarity, the, the resolution is uh, very, very good to the eye, and uh, it looks very good. And, and you mentioned it, but I'll, uh, but I'll, 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 I'll restate it again or again. But even, the, even things like the background color of the, of the digit values here, uh, we're all used to in our, in our current line of MX uh, you know, displays where we can go in and change the color of the of, of the actual values, right? To make to make this RPM value instead of white, we could make that red, and we can do that now with these graphics, just like you we we're all used to in our in our displays. So uh, you're going to see some things, and they're going to be feel very uh, uh, consistent to you from uh, uh, developing and, and creating a, a, an MX dash to creating your SmartyCam three graphics. So very very nice. Very uh, they look very very good. Looking forward to seeing uh, additional ones come along too, as well. Yeah, for sure. What do we have here in our? Uh, we've got a little video we're going to play for you. I've got the sound. Uh, I, I believe the sound is turned down, so you won't. Uh, uh, the first one doesn't have any sound, but the first one here is just creating. Give you. A, it's a sped up picture of um, how to uh, how to to how how setting some graphics uh, may look. This is what the software looks like if you haven't seen it. You're opening up the tabs of the different sets and the and the uh, and just dragging them, dropping them, and then you know sliding them around, putting them where you want them. If you haven't worked with uh, Smarty Cam uh, overlays in the past, you can put them there. You can delete them, put them in. He's changing colors of uh, of, uh, of some of the different text right there, just as we just mentioned. Logos, of course, are always available. Track maps where you want them. Uh, a lot more resizing of logos is now available. I've noticed in the, in this one here as well. So the just a quick video of walking, you know, kind of showing walking through creating the graphics on the uh, for the Smarty Cam Three Sport. Anything else you'd like to add on that one before we jump to the next slide? Uh, no, only a little thing. If uh, you have a look uh, on the screen, you show uh, we have two possibilities to manage uh, the connection that. We, we will speak uh, in our third second. That is a standalone mode or a master connected mode. This is very useful for the user because uh, every measure that you show, you, you can uh, place uh, in the widget 
is completely managed on the AMCAM bus. So you have only to choose the connection, for example, in a master, master mode, slave mode for the camera, to have a complete access to the all information that are flowing on the canvas. So you can, for example, choose the, the issue connected in the master and you will find the same information in the camera. You very, very simple to choose uh, which uh, which measure you want to put on uh, on the widget RPM speed uh, information of the GPS and uh, something else. Uh, very very intuitive and in my opinion a great work uh, from from our guys. And some of that capability is in the family of uh, uh, Smarty Cam threes uh, will be even more enhanced. Uh, Rick asked a question a little bit earlier that was answered, uh, but uh, in, in writing. But uh, is the camera just going to work like with a GPS lap timer like a solo two DL? or can it just capture GPS and motorcycle data? The, the Sport does not have that built-in ECU connection, right? But the, the other three parts of the family will all have that ability to, to connect directly to and through a CAN um, um, stream be able to grab information. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, you're right. But in that case, uh, with the information coming flowing from the master, we can manage also all this information in the camera. In the previous one, we have the availability only from some measure, more or less fixed from yeah. GPS, from little data from the from the cam. Now uh, the camera is uh, completely connected to the cam, and uh, speaking as you said, for example, uh, about a solo 2DL. If the solo 2DL is connected to the EQ, uh, of the vehicle, we can manage also the data of the echo uh, passing through the for the master from the solo 2DL, for example. Yeah, very very powerful. Even with the, even with the sport, very powerful. So uh, and even more power coming with the uh, with the next uh, next couple versions. Uh, let's see. There we go. You mentioned earlier the 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 door. You held it up and you uh, and you showed it here. But I uh, uh, wanted to give everybody even a little bit more of an idea with my. Uh, uh, my, my older, not working as well as they used to, hands, uh, the one thing that I always did struggle with a little bit was that uh, that small little thumb screw. Uh, boy, boy, has that been fixed here. That's uh, very good. And uh, talk a little bit about the, the door and, uh, and how waterproof that is. Yeah, uh, with the previous model, uh, we have some trouble uh, with many users because uh, sometimes uh, the door was not completely closed, the uh, screw was not completely uh, turned, so they use uh, uh, a screw uh, screwdriver to, to manage the, the turn of the, the screw. Sometimes the screw was broken and sometimes was not completely closed and with the vibration, the, uh, the door opened with many, many issues. Uh, what we have done here is uh, uh, to manage a new way uh, to move uh, this kind of door. Uh, very, very simple. We have uh, a, a little piece of uh, uh, plastic uh, turning right or left. We can open and close uh, the door with a, a little push. Uh, the big advantage is uh, that you can do uh, this operation without any additional items, only with your two fingers. The uh, doors, uh, the door are, is completely closed with with an O-ring, and this makes the door uh, an IP65. For our test, is more than IP65, but as uh, all other uh, system, uh, we declare IP65 because we want to give uh, also a, a a feedback from the user uh, for this facility. Uh, the system is very, very fast. No, no way to unlock or to lock accidentally because we have also a little retaining system that lock the system, lock the system itself by the vibration or, or from the wrong movement of the user. Uh, I think that uh, our mechanical engineer give a, a hard work because uh, this uh, took them uh, a couple of. Uh, of month of uh, ideh uh, <laughs> to reach this kind of door so uh, very 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 appreciated by me and also by the first user that managed the, the door i hope uh, that all our uh, customer can manage uh, can try this uh, and give us the feedback it was the first thing that i have i found as a vast improvement when i uh, when i was uh, 
manipulating the door uh, right off the bat, it was like, oh, well, this is much, much nicer, much, much uh, yeah, uh, yeah. very well ap- appreciated by me. And and it, again, just a quarter turn, right? It's uh, there's not a try to find the beginning of the thread and and, and spin it in. It's uh, you know, pop, pop, and it's uh, and and you're there. So, very happy. And um, uh, we have it. You may have mentioned it. I don't think we we certainly didn't focus on it, but. Um, uh, micro SD card as as the files as as the uh, the medium medium to 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 capture the 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 data and the video right uh, is that mainly strictly because of uh, the the camera is so small yeah yeah <laughs> uh, the, the 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 choose uh, made was uh, was related to the size of the camera um, as mi- micro SD is popular with other action yeah, camera. Very. Is not so useful uh, probably in uh, in our market, but uh, in a so small camera, no way to put uh, a big SD. So we try to use uh, the micro SD as our competitor, and I think that an, in a little camera like this uh, is, is the right choice because uh, uh, also uh, the way you use the the micro SD when you when, when you have the camera in hand. Is very very helpful because uh, they are. Uh, I don't know if, if if you can see. Little little bigger. There's okay. uh, yeah. a way to take the the micro SD. It's a push pull connector, so no no way to uh, to insert in a, in a wrong way or uh, or other system. So I think also this uh, is a little improvement uh, in so big in so so little camera. And the um, uh, there is a question there that is there a preferred. Uh, Micro SD card size is a uh, or manufacturer or or speed. Uh, we want high quality cards. Obviously, this thing is uh, throwing a lot of video and a lot of data at that card, and so you uh, you need to 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 grab a, a quality card, I suppose. But what about uh, uh, card sizes? Is uh, what what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, uh, we we can manage up to uh, bigger card size, uh, up to two terabyte, so no problem uh, on 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 the card size. Um, about the the speed and the quality, uh, we can uh, suggest our customer to use a good quality micro SD because uh, uh, they typically have a good bandwidth, so no problem in the writing data. Uh, many years to use respect to the. Uh, Cheaper, uh, cheaper one. Uh, I think in the manual uh, there are uh, uh, also described uh, uh, which which are the minimum uh, requirement of, of the SD. But we manage more or less all SD and micro SD uh, that are present on the market. What can I suggest to you is to choose a, a good SD, not not the the best SD because. Uh, mm-hmm. Is not needed for for this application, but the good SD uh, could give you a, a good feedback, a good reliability, and you can use the, the SD many 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 times. I think then the the, uh, the recommendations probably stay somewhat the same as the cards that we've had before. If you if you get a good brand name, mid to high quality uh, yeah. card, you're going to be in good shape. The uh, there's a sweet spot in there somewhere, and it's up to the individual user of of speed versus cost, right, and and size, and uh, yeah. uh, you know, yes, you can put a two terabyte in there, but that's gonna uh, not gonna do, try to do quick math on on the on the fly here. But that would be very 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 many uh, sessions on the track, and it may not be uh, you're not using much of that card, right? So maybe a 16 gigabyte, uh, maybe a 32, 16, I think is what I would probably use. And I'd get a couple, two or three of them and just swap them out, uh, every session. Uh, when I open up the door, I take the other one out though, the used, uh, one with the session in it. And I put a new, another one right back in. And then I, uh, go and, uh, uh, download that video and clear it off the card and, uh, and be ready to swap them out for, so for me, 16, 16 gigabytes was a pretty was a was a pretty good size, and I understand that's probably what we're uh, we're shipping them with here in uh, here in North America. So um, perfect. The uh, uh, I thought I saw a couple questions there. I think they were uh, they were answered as uh, as well. We have another video here, uh, real quickly, just kind of talk about the the door itself. Maybe give everybody a little bit of an idea. You held it up, but uh, this might give everybody a little bit of an idea of what it kind of looks like. You can chat about it as it kind of comes up. Yeah, so. some advertising. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
yeah, as you can see, this is the, the movement of the lock and unlock system, very, very quick. As we said, uh, we support up to two terabytes of the, the card. The camera is very, very small. Uh, we manage the MP4 file, uh, as we described before, uh, as, a, as a standard, industrial standard, uh, commercial standard market. And uh, I, I read uh, in the chat uh, some trouble from user with the micro SD card, but uh, I can assure you that uh, after a three or four times you manage it uh, is more or less like the SD card, only some attention, uh, more attention for, for the size, but nothing else is robust and uh, is very, very reliable. Perfect. Good, good tip there that, um, yeah, they, they may be a little bit tight when you first put them in and out and they may not pop uh, quite as good, but uh, very, very, very quickly, you're going to be able to just push on that and it's, it's going to come out with, with plenty of room. I've, I've heard of a couple of users that did talk about maybe putting just a little bit of a um, piece of doubled over tape on it gives you just a little bit more reach. If uh, if we've got big fingers like mine that that, uh, that don't work as good as they used to, maybe so, so work around it if uh, if you have to. But I, I'm I'm it's my understanding that it's been uh, been very good and not hard to work with. So yeah, you you are right. By the way, the push pull connector is a little easy to to extract the card also with a big big finger. I, I, I my finger is not so small, but I have no problem in uh, uh, putting uh, inside the, the card and the extract with the with the push pull connector. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, let's. Uh, oops, there we go. Um, uh, let, we can go through some of these, but the I um, um, uh, wanted to make sure we included this as a just uh, in the presentation with some of the different things. But are some of these that maybe you haven't chatted about a, a little bit? Uh, some of these stand out to you? Yeah, his little uh, description of the technical details. Uh, we have touch more or less all the points, but just to, to review all the system. Uh, we have an improved data management in the video file, uh, very, very useful in uh, Ray Studio 3. As we, we said before, data are acquired are their native frequency from CAN. So if you have a 100 Hz CAN bus, you have data inside the file at the same frequency. So bigger improvement in, in the data management. Uh, is completely compatible to the aim can master uh, already out of the box so you have to uh, you don't have to program anything you just connect the camera to the to the master and all the data coming from the the, the stream is uh, recorded uh, in the in the video file uh, the new uh, feature is that also the can could be completely configurable for advanced user in ray studio 3 if, uh, for example, uh, we open a configuration for a solo 2 dl we can generate our uh, configurable uh, stream. We can choose what, uh, what channel put in what ID. Uh, we can export that file for the camera and we simply import the configuration of the can in the camera and the camera manage completely uh, the stream. So very, very useful and very, very easy to manage also for user that are not so uh, uh, deeply uh, uh, deeply in the management of the, the, the CAN system. Uh, you, you set your, your stream in the master, you export the configuration, you import that file in the camera and all is done. So uh, the next point, uh, say, say the same. So from the master, you can manage it directly the stream uh, manage it uh, in the race to your thing. Also, the, the trigger now is selectable uh, from Ray Studio 3. If we choose uh, the possibility to manage the stream, uh, we can choose also the trigger for uh, start and stop recording. Uh, the lengths are more or less the same of the previous one, 67 and 48 degree. Uh, we found the useful for most of the application, so we, we don't change uh, uh, that choice. We did have a question earlier that I think was that, uh, it uh, answered already in written form, but um, um, those uh, changing of those uh, field of view lenses is, is not uh, not not really possible, right? Once you've once you've got the camera, you can't just spin on. Uh, if you have an eighty-four, you can't just easily swap to a sixty-seven, correct? 
Yeah, uh, you, you can change the lens, but not the, the final user because there's also the, the process to make the, the focus right. We have uh, uh, in the lab uh, a complex system to, uh, to have the right focus and the right calibration of the lens. So it's not uh, uh, an operation that the user can do standalone. Perfect. And the new glass, uh, you, you mentioned that already. Uh, the uh, the next bullet item, uh, FAT32 XFAT compatible. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about that uh, and what that does for the user. Uh, about what, sorry? The uh, the different types of file formatting, uh, FAT32 and XFAT. Uh, on the glass protection, uh, we choose the, the sapphire uh, for... Uh, Try to, to remove uh, some uh, some accidents uh, happened uh, in the in the previous one. Um, on the market today, uh, sapphire glass is more or less the best choice uh, you can do. We have uh, also the, the spare part of the glass, but in our test uh, we found very very difficult to scratch or to to broke the uh, the glass itself. So this is another big improvement. Uh, surely, <laughs> as the the global shutter sensors is not the, the, the cheaper choice, but uh, uh, what we want to do is to uh, focus on the quality of the product. So uh, reliability, quality, and the improvement of new product. Uh, this is what we want that the user found uh, in the new uh, version of the camera, uh, new version of the locker, and the uh, new product uh, that are going to be uh, available on the market from AIM. And what is the difference between FAT32 and, and XFAT uh, file uh, file types? Yeah, uh, FAT32 uh, and XFAT is a two uh, typical uh, file system available uh, on the market. Uh, is uh, both, uh, are both comp compatible uh, with the Windows and uh, with the uh, Mac. Uh, the big difference is that uh, FAT32 uh, can manage uh, card up to uh, 32 gigabytes. XFAT can manage uh, stream and data up to 2 terabytes. Uh, in that case, if you want to go in a, uh, in a deep discussion, uh, the camera could manage both of them. Uh, one limitation of the FAT32 is also the uh, size of the single file. Uh, it's not our decision, but is uh, the standard. Uh, FAT32 can manage a file up to four gigabytes. Uh, if the file get bigger, we have to truncate uh, the first one and start uh, another file. Uh, no loses in the uh, data recorded, in the video recorded, but you will find uh, two separate files, two, three or four, depends on how many hours you have to, to record. XFIT uh, has not uh, uh, this limitation. So we put uh, up to now a uh, limit of, uh, uh, I think, 20, 24 uh, gigabytes of file, but it's only related uh, to have uh, a file that could be managed uh, during a copying or during a movement. Theoretically, you can have a bigger file, uh, one file only with a bigger capacity. This is our decision and we can move and decide to, to change this dimension uh, in, in the next development of the system. Uh, it's not a, a standard limit, but it's a limit that we want to put to have a, a file that can be managed easily by the user because uh, I, I, I get mine if I have a, a 500 gigabytes of file every time I have to move or copying on edit in Ray Studio or, or in other device uh, is very very uh, difficult to manage so uh, divide the file in a, in, in a little file uh, speaking about the size uh, could be could be a good choice. 24 gigabytes uh, uh, up to now are more or less uh, free for more than four hours of uh, record. So I think okay. mo most of the competition could be managed by a single file. SD capacity up to two terabyte, uh, so no problem uh, uh, for the dimension. And uh, new widgets and graphics sets are coming. Uh, we are focusing on the development of uh, new graphics and because uh, we found uh, very, very interesting the possibility that the new platform give us uh, also on the graphic uh, point of view. 
Perfect. All that stuff is coming uh, either is here, obviously, and uh, and it sounds like you've uh, uh, even considering uh, uh, tweaking a few things if 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 needed. So that's kind of nice. So viewing of the data, we, we chatted a little bit about this, and uh, and and Robbie put the link in there about uh, our webinar two or three weeks ago where we talked about just just dragging and dropping in the the, the video file and and having data. Uh, you, we want to talk a little bit about the the, the Smarty Cam Three Sport uh, viewing viewing data from it. Yeah, this is only a screenshot of our Studio Three uh, to show the possibility uh, of the user. As you can see, the, we have imported a video file. In the video file, there are also present a good amount of data. Uh, laps divides uh, by sector, and uh, uh, on the right, uh, two images of the the video from uh, uh, the comparing of the two different uh, labs. So in one, uh, one screen, uh, you can see video, data, and uh, uh, what, uh, all what you need for, for your uh, investigation. This way of looking at video is, uh, it, it's almost like you have to change your way of thinking is, is we've always in the past, we've had the video before we had Ray Studio 3 uh, as the viewing tool. The video is just one, you know, um, one long session, all, you know, eight of all eight of your laps and the warm up laps and cool down laps and everything. But now it, it, it truly is, it's lap by lap and the, and the software is bringing that up where, where you can just grab a, uh, whichever lap that you're interested in in the in the Race Studio 3 software, it brings up that lap, and you can play that lap um, yeah. you know, stacked with you know, two, three, four. Yeah, I think up to eight uh, right now, but I think that that's a uh, that that's something that we can work with even more. But the uh, the ability of thinking of that as a lap by lap uh, video, and it's easily broken apart and uh, and displayed to you that way is 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 very very valuable. I very very much enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, data and video are fully synchronized, so you can scroll in video, in data, uh, in both, uh, and uh, all other data uh, comes with your scroll accordingly. Yeah, yeah, very, very powerful. Uh, the the uh, and and the and the Smarty Cam um, three line in the sport uh, take that to new levels with uh, with with some of the, the the higher quality video. So, very, very cool. Very, very cool. Looks like all the uh, questions have been kind of answered as they've been going. We I think we're just going to cover them some mounting stuff and uh, and a few more things and uh, we'll start to kind of tidy this one up. The uh, this screen here shows some of the standard mounting stuff and uh, it sounds like uh, everything is compatible uh, with the uh, if you've had a Smarty Cam already and you and you want to mount this one up it's uh, it's basically uh, unplug it and plug it back in and you're off and running right. Yeah, um, simple slide only to show that we keep uh, all the compatibility with the uh, previous uh, fixed system already present on the market, already used uh, in our camera and uh, used uh, also in the next uh, device that will be released uh, in the next month. So uh, only to show that we have a look uh, for the feature, but keep in mind what we have done in the past. Yeah, and and this picture shows one of those um, features that we've had in Smarty Cams in the past, but and of course continues with the Smarty Cam Three Sport. That uh, is, sometimes you have those conditions when uh, hanging that camera upside down is uh, is the best way to mount it, uh, uh, and we have the ability to flip that uh, flip that video over with a simple uh, menu item. So uh, very very powerful. So perfect, perfect. The, um, uh, anything else you'd kind of like to add as we kind of start to wind this one up, uh, Fabrizio? Well, uh, no, nothing to add. Uh, I, I'm very, very uh, curious uh, to know uh, which is the, uh, the impression of our user uh, the, the first time they take in the, in the hands of the camera, uh, find uh, so much power in a so little device. I'm very curious uh, to share with them uh, their experience, uh, their point of view, uh, some suggest uh, if they have uh, some issues. Uh, all uh, what the user can share with us is uh, every time very, very important for us. But uh, I think that uh, in this situation, this new approach and this new technology uh, could be very, very happy and very funny for all that. It must be an exciting time for um 
for all of uh, AIM Italy, especially you, uh, being being the head of the, the hardware department, that uh, that you have um, conceived this uh, this product and and designed it, and uh, and it is making its way out into the hands of the uh, of the users. That's got to be a pretty exciting time for you too, I bet. So. Yeah. Perfect. So let's uh, let's jump in and kind of close this one down. I it, it was a it was a it was a great great webinar. I, I really enjoy listening to some of the you know some of the experts that we can bring in here, and uh, Fabrizio is uh, certainly one of those. The uh, this video will be as fast as I can get it done and put up on YouTube. Will be up on uh, uh, up there for everybody to view. Um, we've got a ton of videos out there. All of the webinars, obviously, and then. Uh, bunch of other uh, videos that uh, that we've been building and we're going to be building uh, even more that maybe are outside of the webinar format uh, fairly shortly so uh, go, take a look at the, the YouTube site if uh, if you're watching here live and you haven't visited over there uh, there's a, just a ton of information the uh, customer support uh, we're, we're always out there for you just give us a holler uh, look for our guys the out there at the at the track uh, with with the vans or with their backpacks and and uh, if not of course we're always available at the 800 uh, tech support line uh, to to give you any help that you that you need to get the most valuable out most 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 value out of your aim products and software what are we doing next week Next week, we're uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, Ray Studio Three and and uh, functionality of you know this button does this and this is how you get to do this and and uh, and, and we needed to do that with the with the release of Ray Studio Three analysis and uh, and now it's time and and then of course the hardware stuff that we've been doing with uh, with you especially today and uh, but what we've wanted to do for uh, for a while and, uh, and 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 itching to get back there and do some. Uh, uh, not just what a button does, but how do you use the tool? And, uh, and we're going to start that again uh, this coming uh, a week from today uh, with Chloe is going to come back and join us. And we're going to talk about uh, data analysis. And it's going to be in the motorcycle world, but uh, there's a development. Uh, there's uh, overlap, obviously. We can, learn, we can learn from all the different forms of motorsports using the data. She has been going out and doing a lot of data trackside support uh, in conjunction with AIM and and one of the things that she's uh, not only learning from her own motorsports and working with uh, teams but then going to the track and talking to users is one of the first things that folks are doing at the track uh, is optimizing their gear ratios there's a there's a the, as, as I chatted with her and we were kind of planning on where we wanted to go I said well what what is the one thing you get questions on virtually every time you go to the track and she says the first thing that teams need to do when they go to a track especially a new track is understanding their gearing it's something they work on first and I said well let's do a webinar just about that since that's what most people are using uh, and uh, and needing to dial in on on the first thing first time they're there so she's going to come here and she's gonna have some data from uh, just a week week or so ago and uh, of of them showing up at a new track and then walking through the process and using the data to help them optimize those uh, those uh, gear ratios that they've placed onto the bike. So she's going to join us a week from today. It's going to be a great time. Uh, Chloe's always been very very popular here, and uh, and uh, no doubt she will uh, bring that uh, uh, that that, uh, that good information again. So looking forward to that next week. Um, Contact information. If you have any information, uh, if you have any uh, questions that you're uh, that you're after, we've got some uh, contact information here. Obviously, you can uh, um, uh, so if it was some of the software side, software at aimsportline.com. There's Fabrizio's email address. If you got a question for him, of course, mine, and uh, the normal support at uh, aimsportline.com. But uh, give us a call, give us a holler if you have any any questions. Uh, Fabrizio, thank you very much for coming here. I know that uh, you you're very very busy and and uh, and continually continuing to go, but um, yeah, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to come and join us. Is there anything else you'd kind of like to add to this? Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to, to participate at uh, your webinar. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Perfect. And um, the uh, the camera should be available. The, the sport should be available. Go contact your uh, your your local dealer, and uh, yeah, some of the sure. stuff that we've looked at. Make sure you contact them, and uh, you should be able to grab them and 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 stick them onto the cart or the car, and uh, and uh, grab some great information. So, thank you everybody for coming again. I appreciate it. Uh, those of you watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, and we will be back here a week from today, and uh, for. Um, data analysis and, and, uh, and gearing on bikes. Talk to you soon.